go back home I said a dog can make it feel so helpless sometimes it make it feel so lost your love's all I got baby the thing I thought I'd never see the pouring from my heart the la 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 pouring out of my heart Thank you. That's Connor Christian, everybody. Man, great song. Great song. Thanks, man. All right. So uh, while you got your smarty pants phones out, go ahead and like Southern Gothics. Insta face, because uh, lots of tours and a brand new record coming in 2019, so that's exciting. Ray Stevenson, what's up, buddy? Hey, how you doing? Been a while, man. Ray and I have played it together at the Bluebird a couple times, I guess, at least once. Yeah. I think a couple times. A couple times. Uh, Ray is a not only a, a well-published songwriter, um, but he's also a, a just an amazing painter. I mean, the visual art that you come out with is, is fantastic, too. I'm, I'm so envious of that. I've, I've got about a half a talent, and I think you've got three fully realized. But uh, at any rate, um, also an author. So we'll talk about all of that. Um, how long have you been in Nashville? Uh, 20, 20, 21 years, something, 98, whatever that is. 20, yeah. yeah. So we've been here about the same amount of time. So, yeah. Uh, Ray, you've been uh, you've been prolific. You've been uh, you've taken well advantage of those twenty years. And uh, how uh, I don't have a current tally, but just to give us an idea, how many cuts do you have on major label releases? Mm, about, about fifty. About fifty cuts, y'all, on major label releases. Um, and we're talking big names here. <laughs> give us a give give me the top three names that uh, you're proudest of as far as your cuts go. Uh, Willie Nelson. Will, the Chris, the Chris, Willie Nelson? Yeah. <laughs> Willie Nelson. Chris Christopherson. What? And um, Merle Haggard. All right. Those, <laughs> d I think that bears repeating. Some of the best songwriters, the best country songwriters in the world, Merle Haggard, Chris Christopherson, Willie Nelson, have seen fit to cover Ray Stevenson songs. I think that's pretty dang cool, huh? I would be so insufferably uh, braggadocious if that was I me. I know. I feel like bragging now. I feel like I'm bragging You're now. You're the most right? humble guy in the world. I would be insufferable if even one of those guys <laughs> had coffee with me. Right. Much yeah. less cover oh, guess one of what my I songs. Did. You know? You want to hear about what I did? <laughs> I'd be, oh, oh, you know Willie cut my song, right? I mean, every five you, you told me that 22 times already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So at any rate, this man is not only ex extremely successful and talented, but very humble as well, and uh, never ceases to amaze me. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about this book? Okay. Well, I didn't write this book. Um, Lee asked me if I if I would speak about it, and I've never spoken publicly about this, so I don't. I want this to come off sincere and not like it's not religious or not like I'm not like proselytizing, um, but. About 10 years ago, somebody gave me a copy of this book. It's called The Tao Te Ching. It's a little book of Chinese wisdom. And basically, um, it like changed everything for my creative process. It, it changed everything in my life in, in, a, in a really positive way. Um, basically, Nature itself is the wisest of, of all. It's been around longer than anything, and it sort of contains everything. And uh, most of, of us is made of water. You know, the earth is mostly water. We're mostly water. And so this little book describes basically the rules of water. And... Um, when you can start to think kind of like water does, then you're thinking more like nature does. And so all your thoughts become more natural. And once 
you start to understand it, you understand that everything is like water. Songwriting is, is like water. It's either flowing or it's not flowing. Um, painting is definitely fluid. You know, everything is energy. And they didn't have the word energy back then, so they, they use water, which, which is a good way to kind of think about energy. Um, so uh, Lee and I were talking one night about painting or whatever, and I told her, I was like, you got to get this book and read it. So it's, it's like 81 verses, and they're all like little paradoxes, which means they sound backwards. Uh, one of them says, um, the softest always overcomes the hard. And you think, when when has that ever happened where the soft overcomes the hard? But the softest thing in nature is water, and water will cut through a diamond uh, with enough time. So water is patient, and water is steady. And, you know, so... Um, so when you read one of these verses and it doesn't make sense to you, that is actually an aspect of nature and of life that doesn't make sense to you. So if you, if you read something and it sounds backwards, then it kind of goes back into the, your subconscious and then six months later you're driving down the road and all of a sudden you go, boom. It's like, oh, I know how to make that work. And, and if you can make it work with your golf swing, then you can make it work with your when your kids misbehaving at home or something like it. It it really so um, anyway. Uh, it's called the Tao Te Ching, and uh, Lee was nice enough to buy several copies down here. I'm going to give them away for whoever's interested. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'll, I'll read one. I mean, it's really heavy, like really, it's, it's the deepest shit I've ever, like, really come across, uh, where sometimes it doesn't even mean anything until you've had time to, like, digest it. But uh, this is just a, a random page here. Um, you seek the way, but see it not. It is called colorless. You listen, but hear it not. It's called soundless. You would grasp it, but you cannot touch it. It is called bodiless. These three qualities cannot be expressed in words. Therefore, they are taken together, and it is called the one. The higher part is not manifest. Its lower part is not hidden. It is eternal. It cannot be named. It returns to the unmanifested. It is called the formless form, the image Imageless image. Um, this is not the one that I was. Um, I'm on the one page over. Sorry, that was even confusing to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, this this was a page. Um, um, seek emptiness of self. Seek stillness. All things manifest themselves and then return. When a plant has blossomed, it returns to the root. The return to the root is called stillness. That stillness may be called a reporting that it has fulfilled its task. The reporting of fulfillment is the immemorial rule. To know the immemorial rule is to be wise. To ignore it leads to in impetuous and evil motions. To know the immemorial rule brings power and forbearance. Power and forbearance bring compassion. Compassion brings a kingly heart. He who is king-like grows heaven-like. Through likeness to heaven, he possesses the way. Possessing the way, he is eternal. His powers, powers will never fail. So, like a rose... When a rose blossoms, that's its job, to blossom. And, and a rose blossoming is like a songwriter finishing a great song or painting a great painting. And then after it blossoms, then the energy goes all the way back to the root to start the whole process over again. So like half of being a songwriter is not writing songs. 
It's a, it's, the yin-yang is the philosophy. So it's like a way of thinking. So when you think about being creative, you also have to think about not being creative so that you can be creative because you can't be creative all the time. Uh, you can try to be creative all the time, which is what almost all of us do um, because we need to make money and there's stress and ego and you want to get forward. But the blossoming happens on its own. The, the real job is to go back to the root and, and um, get out of your own damn way, really. So I'll be shaking everybody's hand at the back of the door when we leave here, like the <laughs> preacher. And That's really cool, man. I expect somebody to invite me over for fried chicken. Uh, <laughs> So, so anyway, like I said, I've never spoke about that, but this is something that, that like, it, it didn't just take me a, one level forward. It took me, like, 25 levels forward um, just because I realized that everything that I was doing in my life, I was, I was working as hard as I could and beating it as hard as I could, but I was beating it in the dumbest way you could beat it. You know, it's like um, if something doesn't work, like w water doesn't just sit there and knock, it just sort of flows around and finds another way. And, and always looking for an easier way to get around something is like one of the things that I do now. Um, you can get into any nightclub in the world if you, if you, scope it out and really look at it from every angle. You know, you, you may never be able to get in the front door, but there's some guy that washes dishes that comes outside and smokes cigarette every 10 minutes. And, you know, for the price of a cigarette, you can slip right in somewhere. Um, so. That's fascinating. That's I it. I remember, I remember the first time we, I remember the first time we hung out together in your studio, you were telling me about this process, and I'm ashamed of myself that I haven't read this book yet because you told me about this more than a year ago. But I, I remember, like I said, Ray's not only a, a musician and songwriter, he's a painter as well. But just to kind of uh, further that, that analogy of water, um, he was telling me about how this had changed your process whereby if you're working on a painting and you feel like you're stuck, you just put down the brush and go either work on another painting in another room or yeah. pick up your guitar and because water to be like water and that if water is rolling down a ravine, if there's a rock in the way, it just goes right around it. It doesn't right. think about the impediment. It's just like, well, I'll just go this way then. I'm water. I can go wherever I want, right? right. And if you treat your creative flow that way, then you don't hit a block. You just hit a change of direction. Go, well, I'll work on this one for a little while. Right. Yeah, the, the biggest thing that changed with, with the just physical process was instead of working on one painting, I work on like 15 at a time. And if I have an idea for, for a painting, then that's an idea for a whole series of paintings. Because if I wanted to paint an Indian, I have an idea of like what I want it to look like. But as I'm working on it, I'll have an idea for, well, what if it would look like this? So then I'll... I'll start one like that, or or it may be 15 paintings that 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 aren't even related to each other. Um, or being a songwriter is not working on a song; it's working on like 20 songs. You have like 20 songs started. That way, if you if you feel that songwriting energy, and you like you said, you get stuck on one. There's 24 other ones that need something that you can go look at. And a lot of times when you're you come over here and you fix this song you go oh that's just what this song needs and so then you come back and 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 you always have something to do I always have something to do when I wake up in the morning if I feel inspired I have 15 paintings that are in some stage and I have 15 or 20 songs that are in some stage but if I don't feel creative then I go pay my bills or go to the post office and go do those things. You got 15 uh, bills to pay. Right. <laughs> right. So, so there again, it's, going, it's, it's allowing yourself to get out of your creative place because that's what ramps it up when you get back into it. That's fascinating. I'm glad you're here tonight and reminded me of that because I've, 
it's, it's good timing for me and a lot of us. Going into winter, I know, is a really reflective and pensive time for a lot of us, and that's when I do a lot of my writing. Uh, and uh, I'm so happy that you're here to remind me of this whole concept, and I hope you have enough books for me to grab one of those as well. Yeah. Um, how about play us a song? All right. This is one I wrote last year. Uh, a couple of friends of mine. Uh, I have a friend who, uh, who lives in Atlanta, and he was eating um, in this bar, steak restaurant bar one night, and he met this guy at the bar, and uh, they became friends, and it turns out the guy that he met is Gladys Knight's brother, the last living Pip. And uh, he told my buddy that they were getting ready to make another record, so we sent him a, a CD with some songs on it, and, and uh, uh, Gladys really likes this one, so I have my fingers crossed that I might have a Gladys Knight in the Pips cut, which would be cool for my dad because he's a big Gladys Knight fan. You never know, like, who who will find the, your song or... We're all the same With different names Looking for love Through joy and pain All flesh and bone All headed home Don't even know We're not alone Links in the chain We're all the same We're black and we're white Wrong and we're right Strong and we're weak Proud and we're meek We lose and we win Same yet we sin we give and we take we bend and we break but we'll know someday we're all the same Beautiful. Thank you. That's Ray Stevenson, y'all. <laughs> Anthony Crane. How are you, sir? I like that ATL hat. Thank you. <laughs> so Anthony and I just met Friday night and uh, got to hear him play a set of his tunes and uh, was very impressed with your singing and playing, man. Thank you. Fantastic stuff. Thank you, man. Uh, so we're new friends, but uh, you do live in the ATL, right? Mm-hmm. That's Atlanta for you, you know, <laughs> not so hip folks. We foreigners. call it the ATL down there sometimes. Uh, at any rate, um, yeah, Atlanta's a great scene. I mean, you got, uh, I mean, obviously huge 
hip hop world going yeah, on it's there. A, it's a crazy huge scene, man. blues and jam bands and pop rock and all, all I mean bluegrass, all sorts of stuff. I going feel on. like it's an underrated music scene, in my opinion. I agree. Um, but also, like my friends who are professional musicians in Atlanta, they're like, "Don't tell anybody. Like, <laughs> we don't want to move in here. It'll turn into Nashville." <laughs> Oh, heaven forbid. <laughs> no, it's, uh, you know, uh, it is interesting, though, how every city has its own vibe, right? You yeah, know, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, of course, Atlanta is known for a huge, uh, huge hip hop and blues rock kind of, you know, vibes, I guess. Uh, when I was there in the 90s, a bunch, you know, you bands like Collective Soul and the Black Crows were really, you know, obviously hitting it hard from the uh, uh, alternative rock and bluesy rock, southern rock, you know, yeah, kind of some vibe. Yeah, my favorites, man. I'm, I'm and, I'm such a, a music mutt, you know, I like I like all of it. Like, I love all of it, seriously. Um, huge fan of everything across the board, you know, from hip-hop to classic rock. I was raised on classic rock. Like my dad was a huge Almond Brothers and Leonard Skinner fan, but then <laughs> dad would leave the house and mom would put on an Otis Redding record, you know, so. Now, did you grow up in Atlanta? Mm-hmm. Okay. Born and raised, yeah. Wow, okay. I'm one of the few. I was about to say, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Uh, That's great. So you've seen some growth there. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Town just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It's crazy. So, I mean, <clears throat> what what would you say percentage-wise the, the time you spend at home versus on the road singing your songs? Um, the past year and a half has been been really intense. Well, the past three, four years, I'd say probably 50-50. Gotcha. Uh, I'm on the road versus actually being at home and hanging out with my dog. Gotcha. Yeah. About 50-50. That's a good, that's a good yeah. solid percentage. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a, it's a cr crazy lifestyle. Now, do you, do you, are you one of those people who needs to set aside time to write, or do you write everywhere you go? Um, I thought that was a great question you asked Connor earlier, because being on the road, for me, it's, it's normally in a full band setting. So there's a lot of distractions as far as people and things. you got to be everywhere a certain time, and it's, it's, and, and bad decisions. Um, for me, that's a difficult environment to write in. So I normally like to write in solitude when I've got peace and quiet and there's not chaos going on around me. Um, personal preference thing. You know, I, I don't know if it works for everybody, but that's, that's just my, my thing. Now this is, I guess, less about creative side, but I think uh, more nuts and bolts, but it's something that I'm really curious about other people's process on is, how do you organize these thoughts? I mean, do you do you record uh, work tapes on your phone? Do you you know keep a, a list of your lyrics uh, on a laptop? How do you how do you organize what yeah, you're working on? I mean, it's a weird combination of of all that. Like when I first started writing songs, it was about a melody. Um, didn't even necessarily have to have words with it. It was just a, a melody that I heard in my head, and and so I would do like a voice recording of that, and then try to match you know, lyrics to that and, and obviously chord progressions and things like that. But it, it, it becomes, you know, the more you get to know about music, it's kind of like the more you're screwed. Because, <laughs> you know, it's a little overwhelming. Like, what do I do with this? With it? Like, how do I make the hook different than the verse? And how do I throw in a bridge and, and these kinds of things? And, you know, you have seven options, so you're a little limited there. But... Um, yeah, man, it's it's um it, it changes for me constantly, um, but I, I still try to keep it simple as far as the the process of of um, even if I write a chord progression, I will record that chord progression and then record a, a melody over it with no no words, so just kind of hum a melody, um, and then I, I go back and try to write lyrics to that. That's a great that's a great method for sure. And you use your <coughs> phone for that primarily? I do. Now I do. Yeah, me yeah. too. I mean, it's what, it's what we have with us everywhere we go, so yeah. you might as well utilize it. I know, right? when these things crap out on me, I get a, I'm get i turned into a wreck, <laughs> you know? Like, oh, my God, what am I going to do with all these thousands of thoughts that I had that I don't know what to do with oh, that's anymore? The, yeah, <laughs> that's a terrifying thought, to lose your phone in this day and age. If nothing else, just for losing all your <laughs> all your thoughts. Exactly. All my hopes and dreams. <laughs> um, so do you, write, uh, do you write solo most of the time? Um. My my uh, band for the past ten years or so has been like a uh, soul rock and reggae reggae project. Um, 
I think they're shifting a little bit as far as songwriting. Definitely focused on more of a solo aspect lately, just because I'm getting old. It's hard to pay hard to pay a band all the time, you know. Um, and and as musicians get older with me, you know, they need more money, and it's understandable. So uh, it's hard it's hard to uh, keep everybody fruitful on the road. So yeah, so yeah, the shift lately has been more of a solo thing. Yeah, I can totally understand where you're coming from with that. Yeah. Then there's there's such flexibility with just one guy, one guitar, out the door you go, hop on a plane or Seems a train easy. or automobile and yeah. off you go and, and you can be, you know, pretty flexible that way. Yeah. So that's cool. Well I'm dying to hear some more of your music, so how about well, some? We, so song? Daniel and I are kind of a we're a couple. Mm. <laughs> oh, this guy? You're talking about this guy? Package deal today. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do I tell the story about how, why this yeah, it's sure. going down the way it is. Um, <laughs> Daniel's one of my closest friends in the world, uh, but he doesn't like to sing. So he he uh, knew I was going to be here this weekend, and and he knew he was going to be a part of this this panel, and he was like, "Hey, will you sing some of my songs for me?" But you guys are welcome. <laughs> but this next tune we actually wrote together. Uh, Daniel and I wrote this song with a friend of ours, uh, Christopher Henderson from Athens, Georgia. And it was covered last night by Mr. Matt Williams, who played last. Mr. Matt put out his EP, was that a month ago? Yeah, it was Wait, recent, was. yeah. Um, that dude debuted at number seven on the country charts. That was pretty cool. I've never had that. I don't have Willie Nelson cuts, but I got a Matt Williams <laughs> cut. <laughs> so yeah, this is called Country Bar Song. I feel like Cain and this salty beer and Willie's whiskey river won't take my mind far enough from here and I need Bill to sing me back home cause I'm a walking, talking, jukebox, honky talking country bar song I woke up this morning Waiting on the radio With a look on her face And an old suitcase Told me she had to go And she's a good-hearted woman I'm a good-timing man She don't like my smoking, my drinking My staying out late And my rough-neck, rowdy friends I might sound like a broken record Oh, but here we go again I feel like I And it's all she beer Williams, whiskey, or river Won't take my mind Far enough from here And I need a bill To sing me back home Cause I'm a walking, talking, jukebox, honking, tonking Country bar song Me and the boys We don't know exact right my truck ended up in the front yard after I drove it through the fence that night. I took the John Deere to the packing store. But the police didn't like my idea. She wasn't putting it up with any boy. I might sound like a broken record. Oh, but here we go again. I feel like I it's all to be a Williams whiskey river Wanna take my mind far enough from here And I need a bill to sing me back home Cause I'm a walking, talking, jukebox, honking, talking Oh, I feel like hey, And it's all to be yeah. And will this whiskey river won't take my mind far enough from here? I need a bill 
Sing me back home Cause I'm a walking, talking jukebox on guitar Yeah, country bar song All right, thank you. And that's why he's here. <laughs> that's Anthony Crane. Y'all sing it. And that's a co-write with Mr. Daniel Collins. That's what right. a better segue into uh, talking to you, Daniel. Hello, Brian. How are you, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. So we met here last year we did. at the film festival. And uh, right away, I thought, this guy's a jerk. I never want to work with him again. I thought the same I thing the first time I met him. I, I think the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, actually, it was uh, quite the opposite. I uh, right away was taken away uh, by your pers personality and, and your talents. And uh, uh, there was a, a young man who played on this stage last night by the name of Chase Brown, who uh, you have uh, written a lot of songs for. And uh, matter of fact, um, you were playing guitar with him some last night. You were ripping it up on that electric guitar last night, too. It was fun to see you doing that. And, it's a difficult uh, game, for sure. So you have spent a lot of time not only in the uh, role of uh, songwriter, but producer as well. Yeah. With the, uh, I own a studio out in Athens called Pigpen Studios since 02. So I met Daniel, actually. Yep. He did my first record ever. Okay. First one I ever recorded. Yeah. And Bird. I kept him for a long <laughs> time. You kept him around? And that was Pigpen, you said? Mm -hmm. Pigpen Studios in Athens, Georgia. So running a studio is, uh, that is a, it's very, you know, obviously it dovetails with the whole creative process, but when you're a producer, um, it's, uh, you're having to see, you're having to take a step back and see a bigger picture than just writing the, the song yeah. at, at that point, because you're thinking about all the instrumentation and, and the arrangement and everything that goes along with it. So uh, uh, that's a broad vision. So uh, I think they're kind of married in my head anyway. When I'm writing, I hear all that anyway. So when you're writing a song, you're already thinking in terms of like, well, this is where the... Mm -hmm. This is where the fiddle's going to come at, or this is where whatever might be happening. I, I, I try to think that way, yeah. But eventually, that's what's got to happen anyway, so. Gotcha. At least I hope that's what happens. Very cool. I, uh, yeah, I understand. And that's, uh, uh, now what, so Chase Brown has been, I know, a muse for you, because you, yeah, he's such an amazing singer, and. Yeah, go look that dude up. Yeah. For and, real. And, and I've experienced this some before when I've played guitar for some other singers myself, is that when you hear that voice and you can hear it in your head, you can almost write to it. Is that something that's been a muse for you with Chase? Yeah. I mean, Chase sounds the way that I sound in my head to me, but that's not what I sound like. So. Oh, you sound See handsome. Some, mm. <laughs> and furry. And of course, of course, you know, Anthony's no slouch here either. So. No, I, Ant and I were in a band forever. Yeah. A long um, time. So, yeah. Same thing. I mean, the songwriting has definitely changed for me. Because like he said, we were doing like the rock, reggae, soul thing. Um, and now trying to do all the Nashville, you know, the country songs. This fellow on the end, I get the luxury of writing with him. He's pretty awesome, Mr. Connor. So Connor and you have written together quite a bit as well, yep. huh? Yep. And, uh, and a luck, too, man. There's a lot of luck to it, you know. Yeah. I, I, you know, I found myself in 2013 with... A number one album on Billboard, a number one song on CMT, zero radio play, and no booking agent. You know, like it, it you never know. It's you know, it's just like, it's it, it is. It's being it's being like water and trying to find the next way around and 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 not and not thinking you're not thinking. Well, I'm good. Why is this happening to me? We're all good. We're all good. And and like, you know, if you 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 know give into that that urge to like feel sorry for. For yourself, I've done that a million times, and, and all it's done for me is a waste, waste time and like time I could have been working on something. And it's real easy to be like, well, to hell with this, um, you know, and and, and want to give up. But you got to, you know, persevere. You got to keep, you know, sticking to it. And if the if what you're doing is not working, try something else. Absolutely, and it, it reminds me of the Willie Nelson story too. How many, how many, he got turned down by every publisher in this town, right? I mean, before someone finally. So it, it's, yeah, I mean, like you said, there's a lot of luck involved, a lot of persistence. You gotta be good, you gotta be amazing, but you gotta be more than that, you gotta be a little bit lucky and you gotta be persistent. Garth Brooks moved here, stayed here for like five years, gave up and moved back to his town, and then he came back, and he was Garth Brooks when he came back. So it's like, sometimes you need to get your ass kicked to, to make you tougher, you know? That's the truth. Indeed. Well, hey, 
don't want to miss out on the opportunity to hear a Daniel Collins song as well. So uh, we just did that. Yeah, it's my turn. <laughs> I'm going to go to Connor. <laughs> but you didn't sing one. Not He's gonna. not going. He's not to. gonna. <laughs> no. That's why I thought I could yeah, trick yeah. him into doing it. Okay. All right. You guys just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Package deal over there. Well, all right, so we're right back to Connor then. So, Connor, thank you for being here once again. And uh, Happy to be here. I'll take up less time gabbing, but I wanted to, everybody to get an idea of who you were individually and what your creative process was. And I uh, cool. uh, look forward to uh, hearing just some, some more songs out of you guys for the rest of this segment. And uh, I'm going to get out of the way and let you do your thing. So, thanks for being here, gentlemen. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, sir. So, this next one right here, yeah, big hand for Brian, y'all. Don't you think this dude should be like a DJ for real? <laughs> so um, I just turned 40 this year, and uh, I write with a lot of people that are like 22 and 23, and sometimes I find I have a daughter that's about to turn 22, and so I have a hard time sometimes putting myself in the mindset. Uh, when I was young, I was uh, what I would refer to as a serial monogamous. I had a girlfriend, and then I had another girlfriend, another girlfriend with zero time in between. Uh, I fell in love, like, constantly, you know, like, thought of every girl I met I was in love with. Um, and then I look at my daughter and her friends, and it's, like, the exact opposite. And I watched this guy, like, chase her for years through college and just <clears throat> chase after her, chase after her. And finally, he had to, like, almost, like, grab, grab her by the shoulders and be like, hey, I'm really interested in you, you know? And she's like, oh, 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 serious? Like, for real? Yeah, more than Netflix and chill. So, um, <laughs> anyway, so um, I kind of wrote this song uh, thinking about being somebody like that um, um, and, and, and just, like, trying to tell somebody, like, no, 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 really, like, I really, I like you a lot. I'm really serious. Sorry, I'm just getting over some, something, so um, get a little drink of water here. But anyway, um, all the other all the other writers on this record have had a big year, so uh, I'm feeling that this uh, this that this one's going to be my big year, and this is going to be on our new record. Um, anyway, it's called "Up on Your Love." Girl, this ain't a drunk text Hell, I ain't even drunk yet I ain't looking for a late night kiss Now there's a little more to this So if you're coming over You should stay over Cause I know right where I wanna be lying When that first light hits the horizon You're like a hummingbird singing a song outside of the window that Sunday morning sunrise kissing the pillow oh, You're that smile that opens up my eyes I can't get enough of waking up upon your love Waking up upon your love To you with no makeup Wearing nothing but your hair up I'm wide awake and thinking about what you might be dreaming. Girl, I can't sleep when you're next to me. Every little minute, I don't want to miss it. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. You like that hummingbird singing the song outside of the window. Oh, that Sunday morning sunrise kissing the bed. Oh, oh. You're that smile that opens up my eyes I can't get enough of waking up up on your love Waking up up on your love We can lay with each other till the shadows disappear But when the moon goes down I want to be right Waking up up on your love Waking up up on your love Up oh, y'all like that hummingbird singing a song outside of the window That Sunday morning sunrise kissing the pedal oh, that smile that opens up my eyes I can't get enough of waking up 
This next song uh, with my buddy Guy Clark. Um, he passed away last year. Still hard, hard for me to think about sometimes. Uh, but we were writing this song. I had this idea about writing a song about fixing up an old car, and um, I showed it to Guy, and we started working on it, and we worked on it a, for about a day or so, and. Um, I played it. I played him what we had. I said, what's, what's, what's it missing? You know, what's wrong with it? And he goes, it's, it's a little too sweet. And I went, yeah, I kind of think so too. A little too cute. And uh, fixing up an old car is like a manly thing, right. you know. And, and so he said, I think we ought to make it, you know, dirtier. And I was like, all right. So... Mm-hmm. Um, a few minutes later, he said, um, who says flat black don't shine? Just sort of something he thought of. And as soon as he said that, I went, that's our song Perfect. right there. <laughs> so, so anyway, it goes like this. Like an old 68 Firebird on blocks in the backyard. It's gonna take blood, sweat, and beer. It's gonna take work. It's gonna be hard. It's rusted out and beat up. Just like me. Just needs a little love, sweat, and elbow grease. But she's still working on me She's at it all the time Yeah, she's still working on me Yeah, who says flat black don't shine labor of love beneath an old shade tree cracking a driver's side window hole in the bucket seat just an old moonshine rocket she takes me as I am cause all she can see is a badass trans am and she's still working on me She's at it all the time Yeah, she's still working on me Yeah, who says flat black don't shine Yeah, but mama's gonna ride in style Yeah, and she don't mind takes a little while Cause she's still working on me She's at it all the time Is she still working on me Yeah, who says 
flat black don't shine Yeah, who says flat black don't shine talk about this one I can I can so this is gonna be weird because this happened on the road with this dude he's normally not sitting beside me when I tell a story but I'm gonna tell it anyway um now I'm nervous <laughs> so this one I, he and I were on the road for in those days it was not 50 50 or it didn't feel like 50 50 anyway yeah. we were on the road more Constantly. than we were home um and there come there there entered this human into my life who then was literally in a hotel room, and all I could think about was trying to go home. And um, the idea of the Gideon Bibles, if you travel a bunch in hotel rooms, they're, all, they're always there, right? So this, that's where this song idea came from, was the thought process of that being the centerpiece of how you don't want that anymore. Or at least you could find another way to be happy. That's not stupid hotel rooms. It's a love song. He don't want to say that. Shh. <laughs> Been on the road so long, I don't know any other way. Ever since you came around, found the light of a different day. I count in pieces since the last I saw your face. And baby, I know just where I stand. You give in bed, you give in home to a life that's just been rambling. Been burning out along in a life I know will soon be gone. No small bottles and giddy guns by bones. See all my circling thumbs through the light of a smoking room. I hear a face, this woman laugh. I swear to God, I think it's you. Been counting traces of the outlines of your face. And baby, I know just where I stand. You give in bed, you give in home to a life that's just me where I'm dead. I've been burning out alone in a life I know will soon be gone. No more small bottles and kitty guns by bones. Watch as the lights go low Like a curtain of my despair I look around every corner But I know that you're not near I want to come home, home, home I want to come home I want to come home I want to come home You give in bed, you give in home to a life that starts around where I'm dead. Been burning out alone in a life I know will soon be gone. No more small bottles and giddy guns by bones in bed. Come. Mm -hmm. Wanna come?
this All right, time. so I'm going to borrow Daniel's guitar for this last, last tune um, of mine. So then I'm going to um, do a different song. <laughs> I don't think I can. Are we, are, are, can you mute him so I can just unplug him? This would be easier than trying to do this. All right, so uh, I wrote this song with the two guys I probably brought kind of together. Uh, that uh, I write with the most, thanks, man. Um, Mason Thornley and Keith Hetrick, and uh, Keith's had a couple of number ones this year, so I'm feeling pretty good about this one. I think this one's going to do real well for us. <laughs> All right, the song's called Past Midnight. The clock keeps ticking, we keep talking, don't know where this is heading, but I know one thing. You could be on right now. You could check down, went back to your couch. You could be winding down instead of losing sleep. It's a little past midnight. Must be something going all right. You're still sitting by my side, burning moonlight. We we'll keep this thing going on and on. Your lips fit feel good against my lips. It's like we're on our own island. I could spend my whole life. Loving you past midnight. Oh, 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 you could check down, went back to your couch You could be winding down instead of losing sleep It's a little past midnight Must be something going all right You're still sitting by my side Burning moonlight We we'll keep this thing going on and on Your lips fit real good against my lips It's like we're on our own island I could spend my whole life Loving you past midnight Past midnight If this was nothing Then we wouldn't still be here Now we wouldn't still be here It's a little past midnight must be something going all right You're still sitting by my side Burning moonlight We keep this thing going on and on Your lips fit real good against my lips It's like we're on our own island I could spend my whole life Loving you past midnight Thank you. Of course. I can hear that on the radio. Me too, man. Billy Currington, <laughs> somebody like that. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. If that wasn't the cutest thing ever. <laughs> All right. Well. <clears throat> I wrote this with my friend uh, Joe Leathers and Guy Clark, and uh, Guy recorded this, and uh, Kenny Chesney recorded it twice. Um, it was a title track to his 2014 album, and then he put it on a on a live album that he made, and I found out about that on Facebook. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, here, Kenny Chesney's got a new album," and I looked on, "Oh, well, my song's on there," you know, so. Don't be worried, man. That's how people break up these days. Yeah? Yeah. 
Um, and if it couldn't get any better than that, uh, they made a Guy Clark tribute album a few years ago, and my friend Sean Kemp was um, was producing the record, and he called me one day and said, we're making this record, and we got um, all these famous songwriters um, that we've asked to pick their favorite Guy Clark song for this tribute record. And, and he said, and Chris Christopherson uh, wants to do your song. And so I said, man, don't call me this early in the morning and mess with me. I said, like, I haven't had my coffee yet. And he said, no, I'm for real. He said, I want you to be there. He said, as a matter of fact, why don't you come like an hour early and uh, you can teach the band the song, and then when Chris gets there, we'll be ready to go. So I said, all right. So I came an hour early, and we rehearsed everything, got everything just right. And um, Chris was running a little late, and Sean said, you know, there's – two versions of this song already. What if we change the intro up a little bit on this just to make it different? So I said, that's a pretty good idea. So we added four bars to the intro and changed around a quarter or two and rehearsed that and had everything perfect. And Chris got there and it was time for him to sing and the band kicked it off and everything was just right except we forgot to tell Chris that we had changed the intro. So it kept coming in too soon. Like five times he came in too soon. And so after that, he pointed at me and said, would you come in here? I said, sure. He said, you wrote this song, didn't you? And I said, yes, sir. He said, you think you could just stand right here next to me and tap me on the shoulder when it's time for me to sing? <laughs> and I said, sure. I thought I was in trouble, you know. So I was standing there like this, like a little boy. And uh, the song kicked off and it hit me. I'm standing in the vocal booth with Chris Christopherson, and it was surreal. So I tapped him on the shoulder, and it went a little something like this. Suspense. Hemingway's whiskey, warm and smooth and mean. Even when it burns, it'll always finish clean. He didn't like it watered down, he took it straight up and neat. It feels bad enough for him, you know it's bad enough for me. Hemingway's whiskey. What's oh, tough out there? A good muse is hard to find. Living one word to the next, one line at a time. Oh, but there's more to life than whiskey. There's more to words and rhyme. But sometimes nothing works. Sometimes nothing shines like Hemingway's whiskey. Sail away, sail away, three sheets to the wind. Live hard and die hard, this one's for him. Hemingway's whiskey, warm and smooth and mean. Even when it burns, it'll always finish clean. Didn't like it watered down, he took it. 
straight up in need. Feels bad enough for him, you know it's bad enough for me. Hemingway's whiskey. Stevenson. So this next one, my wife is making me play. She said, stop playing slow shit. <laughs> oh, so, <clears throat> oh, sad ass. Sad ass. Sometimes we get sad, and then other times we feel old. And I wrote this song with a good, uh, a good buddy of mine here in Nashville. I think you guys know him. He's on the other end down there. His name's Connor. His name's Connor. This one's called Too Old to Die Young, um, and it's about the bad decisions he was talking about earlier as well. And I don't know how in the hell I'm still alive. Years ago out on a town Bark and boom. Me and a fella could drink, stay up till noon. Women were hot and the beers are cold. Thought I'd never make it to 30 years old. That was so many years ago. And I was too damn bold to die young. Fat lady gay song. I'm just lucky to be here. So many times. The crazy things that I've done There's no way I should be here And now I'm too damn old to die young I see the love I just go be in my wife's side I just can't dream Quite as much so to hear with them shots and living ain't quite as easy to do. We stay up late, got a number round two. But it's true, I'm too damn born to die young. Fat lady gang song. I'm just lucky to be here. So many times, my time should have gone. The crazy things that I've done. There's no way I should be here. And now I'm too. Every now and then, I think about those days. If I could do it again, you know I wouldn't change a thing. Cause I'm too damn born to die gone. That faith, lady ain't song. I'm just lucky to be here. Many times my time should have come. The crazy things that I've done. There's no way I should be here. Yet I'm so damn old to die young Oh, I'm so damn old to die young Oh, I'm so damn old to die young Oh, I'm so damn old to die young Sorry about that. Yeah, so I All guess right. the, you guys the, got questions, the, you want to talk, anything, anybody got something to say? Any, anybody? Besides my babbling ass. What was that? On the back? It was barely past 11 when my pills kicked in. 
Captain A didn't hurt my cause as I stumbled down the room. Not even half as drunk as these strangers I passed. Stumbling in and out of bars as they smoke cigars and laugh. Well, I don't even think anyone's from here anymore. Well, it's four in sheets down on the bio. And we're dancing out in the quarter under the lamps. Red wine and codeine are coursing through our veins. Those are those bad 3 a.m. decisions I was talking about. <laughs> 